Hello and welcome to the third season of Agri History. In this season, we will talk about animals and domestication of animals. In this, our first episode of season three, we will talk about the domestication of bees. The earliest known evidence of beehive use is in Egypt. The evidence of beekeeping is found in paintings and engravings that ornament a temple with a date around 2400 BCE. Similar engravings have been found in tombs that are dated on 1450 BCE and 600 BCE. The engravings are similar to show that beekeeping did not change very much in the 1800 year time frame. The methods that the ancient beekeepers used were take only honey when the flowering season is done. Based on archaeological evidence, it may be the only occasion when the hive gets opened. The hives were on the ground, not stacked up. The ancient beekeeper, when opening up the hive, would lie flat near the back of the hive. The ancient beekeeper would then break off the back of the hive and then spray smoke into the hive using a primitive bee smoker. The smoke drives out the bees through the escape hole at the front of the hive. This allows the ancient beekeeper to collect honey with minimal stings. This type of beekeeping in long horizontal hives was the primary mode of beekeeping throughout history in ancient Egypt, Crete, Greece, and Rome. This also remains the standard practice in certain parts of Africa and the Middle East. There are, however, differences between the Greek and Egyptian method of beekeeping. All the ancient Greek hives found in excavations had a hole at the back of the hive, but no flight hole at the other end. This removes bee smoking as an option. As such, we can conclude that the method of getting honey in ancient Greek did not involve bee smokers. Later Greek hives were made of baked clay. They were usually stacked and had holes on each end. Within tropical Africa, most of the hives are made from wood and are in cylindrical shape. These hives are hung on trees to protect them from various animals that would consume it. Other materials used in hive making were woven wicker and coiled straw. In Europe, ancient beekeepers kept bees in large logs. This hive type was used from Northern Europe all the way to Spain and Portugal. Although in those warmer regions, the species cork oak was the primary source of the wood logs used in beekeeping due to the wood being lighter and easier to move. These types of hives were later replaced by wicker hives and they proliferated due to the ease of creation. These types of hives were replaced with coiled straw hives which were covered with mud and dung to protect them. It is this method that proliferated all across Europe. During this time period, Beekeeping consisted entirely of taking a piece of comb once a year from a honeybee hive. Time period from the 1600s to the 1800s changed this methodology with the appearance of new hive technology. During the exact same time, honeybees were being taken to the new world to be spread around for honey purposes. These were shipped in either large or upright logs or tall hives made of wooden boards. Honeybees had become a common species by the 1800s. They were then taken west and were introduced to California by 1853 and by 1858 they reached British Columbia. The greatest major change in beekeeping technology was done by Reverend L. L. Langstroth who in his book the hive and the honeybee created the innovations that led to the modern beehive used in honeybee husbandry. This new hive allowed the honeybee population to increase in size. 
with 50,000 adults or more, as well as brood. This allowed for the production of honey well above the hive's requirement. It also prevented swarming and allowed for excess honey to be produced as well. And thus, modern honeybee production was made. Now we'll talk about the different strains of honeybee used in honeybee production. Now we can get into the different varieties of bee that are used in honey production. The first is the Italian strain of honeybee. This strain was originally from the Apennine Peninsula of Italy. This strain of bees was used to replace the original colonies brought over by the first colonists of North America. The next strain are the Russian bees. This strain came from the Primorsky region of Russia. This strain is also home to the Vora and Tracheal mites, and as such, have developed a tolerance to these parasites. Due to this tolerance, the USDA brought them to the United States in 1997 to breed mite-tolerant breeds of honeybee. This strain is also accustomed to cold climates. Next are the Cordovan honeybees. This strain is actually a substrain of the Italian honeybees and are not that much different from the regular Italian honeybee. Next strain is the Caucasian bee. The Caucasian bee comes from the high valleys of the Central Caucasus region. This region lies between the Black and Caspian seas, making them very cold tolerant. The next strain is the Carnolian. This strain of bees can forage in cooler and wetter days, better than most that are bees and rank among the best for overwintering. This strain comes from the Austrian Alps, Yugoslavia, and Danube regions, and can be found all across Eastern Europe, including Croatia and Bosnia. Finally, we'll talk about the Bugfast strain. This strain of honeybee was bred in the 20th century by Brother Adam of Bugfast Abbey in Southwest England, before making it to North America through Canada. This was a bee strain made through crossbreeding of different strains. This concludes our series on bees. Stay tuned for our next episode on cattle.